So prayer is a place of fellowship and coming into agreement with the heart and the mind of God. Amen? It's in that place of fellowship that we can hear from the Lord and we can even come into agreement with the prayers. You know, that the things that he's saying, we can actually declare. Are you all with me on that? So when we come into a place of confidence, when we pray in agreement with what he is saying, with what he is doing, then all of a sudden as we release those faith declarations, that do you know that there's a power and authority that's connected to it to accomplish what it was sent to do? Boy, let me get this side because you guys agree. Let me just say it to this side here. Hey, good seeing you, brother. So we have got to be a people that truly believe that what we pray makes a difference. That Jesus in us, the hope of glory, that when we hear and when we see what he's doing, we've got to be a people of faith that can believe and declare what isn't as if it were, believing that it shall be. Because Holy Spirit has that resurrection power to change anything and everything at any moment. Amen? Amen? So we have to be confident in that. And with, uh, you know, I, I really believe that we can affect the world more than any other way by the way we pray. You know, if we're not people of prayer, then just humble yourself and get in the presence of the Lord and then just ask him to give you a heart to pray. Because prayer is what moves the very heart of God and the hand of God. How many people here like when, he move, when we move the hand of God? Come on now. You know, I love what uh, Wesley said. And he said, God does nothing in the affairs of men except in response to prayer. Woo, that's powerful, powerful, powerful. And without God, we can't do nothing. But without us, he won't. You got to realize that we're in partnership. God is looking for his beloved, his remnant, those who truly believe and have faith that he's looking for us to partner and come into agreement with what he's wanting to do here on earth. Right? Okay. And uh, I got to tell you again, just like I said to you, I think the last time I spoke is that the miracle to reach souls and to see God's will done. The miracle is setting in this house. Tell your neighbor, you're the miracle. Now tell yourself, I'm the miracle that Jesus wants to use to reach the lost, heal the sick, and deliver those in bondage. In Jesus' name. Woo! Give the Lord a hand clap. Come on. But, you know, it's in those times of intimacy with the Lord that we grow in a better understanding of, of what he's wanting to do. Not only who he is, but what he's wanting to do. And it's through, that our inter, it's through our intercession that we become actual partners with God. You all know that? that? That, you know, the world is about doing whatever they want to do. You know? But we, as believers... We need to be about what my father's business. Jesus says, hey, I'm all about my father's business. Whatever he's doing, I'm doing. I don't do it unless I see him doing it. And I don't, I, and I don't say anything that I haven't heard him say. See, we need to be people that think more of that. Because if, it's tr if he's truly our father, then we want to be more like Jesus. Then we need to worship him because we can become more like the one that we worship. And then we have to recognize as we're becoming more like him that we need to be able to look to what he did and how he did it so that we can do it too. Amen? And uh, I just think about everywhere, he, everywhere Jesus went, he was a reconciler. He, he, he brought restoration. Do you know that you are called to be a minister? How many ministers do we have in here in this house? Well, okay, then I can tell you right now, about three quarters of you are not walking out your calling. Because in 2 Corinthians 5, it says that Jesus reconciled the world, reconciled us to God, 
And we are called to reconcile, uh, we are called to a ministry of reconciliation. So if we are called to a ministry of reconciliation, then that means we're ministers. So just tell your neighbor, you're a minister. You're, you're called to tell somebody about Jesus. You're, sh- you're to share the good news and know that God is with you when you do. Now, let me say that again. And know that God is with you when you share the good news. I really believe that our faith declarations releases authority and power that we have no comprehension totally of. We really don't. But can I tell you, that power raised Jesus from the dead. Holy Spirit in you has the power and the authority to change you and transform you from where you were to where God's calling you to be and who he's calling you to be. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Yeah. How many receive it? Yeah, I like that. I receive it. I love that. I love that. So we have to get to that place. Turn your Bibles to 2 Chronicles 7, and I just want to declare this over us and over you and, and over our nation once again. I, I just really believe that if we would just grab a hold of some of the prayers that's in the Word, as we pray the Word, just know that that Word is living and active. You know, in, in, in John 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the word is powerful. It's active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword, cutting through bone and marrow, soul and spirit. And even, oh my goodness, even to to know the intents of your heart. All right. So 2 Chronicles 7, are you there? Then the Lord um, appeared to Solomon. Who is Solomon? Solomon. The second most wisest man in the world, right? That ever lived, right? What? He was the wisest? Except for Jesus. So Jesus was the wisest. Don't be fooled. You know, the Bible says he was the wisest man, but that was not counting Jesus that came and lived shortly after, well, a long time after him. So so we have to understand that and see that because uh, sometimes we can cut Jesus short. Solomon was, in the Bible, says the wisest man. How many people know that Jesus is the word? So, all right. So I have heard your prayer, it it said, and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And what? Turn from their wicked ways, right? And seek my face, then what will he do? He will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal our land. How many people know that the United States of America needs some healing right now? How many people know a president or whoever will be the next president cannot save America? We need revival in America. We need America to turn back to God. God established this nation and we need to push back as believers and start to pray and believe that God can turn this nation around. Amen? So I just want to encourage you with that because it's so important. And, but I love what it goes on to say after this. It says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. Woo! I just included this place in that. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. How many people know that you're all called to be the temple of the living God? Come on. God lives in you. Jesus in you, the hope of glory. 
we got to pray for the glory of God to manifest in our lives more and more because it's in the midst of that glory that all of a sudden things start to shift and change. It's in the midst of that lovesick heart for Jesus, that laying down your life and saying, hey, not my will, but your will be done, just as he did before the Father. How many people know that when we're going through perilous times, when we're going through challenging times, we can always look to Jesus. We can always trust God. Amen? So the word of the Lord saves lives. The word of the Lord heals. The word is redemptive in its nature. Got to tell you that, friends. So, you know, if you messed up a whole bunch, just ask for forgiveness and repent. And he is faithful to forgive. Amen? And that's why we love, uh, we love to pray the word here at Dream Center. It's the word of God is powerful, right? And, and, and as you pray the word, sometimes we don't know what we ought to pray. And, you know, in Romans it talks about that, hey, the, well, the Holy Spirit knows. That's true. But can I tell you something? If you pray the word of God, then that's always a win-win. Amen? Always. Because there's power in the word. Okay? Hebrews 12 says this, we look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze unto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. How many people want to have our faith perfected? Yeah. That faith arise and your enemies be scattered. Amen. His example in this, because His heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you, say you, tell your neighbor you, would be his. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. You know why why he says uh, that conquered its humiliation? Do you know why? Because... When someone was hung on a tree, they were professed to be cursed. Well, he took the curse and conquered it. He not only overcame that, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. Amen? And he, he was the sacrifice. You know, I, I love that when we have to recognize that Jesus was willing to pay it all for you and me. Let's personalize it. Jesus was willing to pay it all, go through being beaten beyond recognition, being hung on a cross, dying for to be the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice, because he never sinned, right, for you and me. And then guess what? When he said it was finished, it was finished. Never have to do it again. See, in the Old Testament, they had to do blood sacrifices all the time. Jesus came to fulfill the law. He didn't come to abolish it. He came to fulfill it. Amen? All right. But faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hearing is activated by the word. Do you know that? It doesn't say that faith comes by hearing the word. No, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can I tell you something, friends? The word of God is, is important to know the word because the word is what's going to set us free. The word is going to help us to walk in victory. The Holy Spirit in us is going to help be the, the one that's going to teach us all things in which we need to do, need to know, and need to do to empower us to get us into a place of victory. But it's the word of God is the one that's going to show you how to live. How to war, how to forgive, how to love, how, and the, just the, hey, you just name it. It's in there. Anything that you need in life, the answer is right here. Search it out. It's here. Amen? So I really believe that this is uh, important because he's speaking to us. He's always speaking to us. And this will increase our faith. As we more that we hear from the Lord, the, you know, the more that, that we understand his word, the more that we're going to know if that was him or not. Yeah, anybody ever get a word and say, was that you, Lord? Yes. Surely that can't be you. That must, been, that must be the pizza I ate last night. 
You know, when you get a challenging word that he says, I, I, this is what I want you to do. You know, and all of a sudden, whoa, wait a minute. No, that, that can't be you, Lord. <laughs> or you say, hallelujah. Yeah, that's definitely God all the way. What'd you say, Lord? Yes, I received that with thanksgiving. Yeah, but it goes both ways, right? So we have to recognize that, that um, man, God is always speaking to us. We should all remember where we came from and what God has done in the journey. It's important. You know, I think about, you know, Revelations 2 and, and you know, the, the church in Ephesus, and I shared this last time I was with you, but I'm just recapping a little bit. And, and so you think about this, that he said all these accolades about the church, but he said, this one thing I have against you, this one thing. You know what it was? That you left your first love. Wow. What? I just want you to ponder this while I go back to my my scriptures. I want you to ponder when you fell in love with Jesus, when Jesus first saved you, where were you at and what were you thinking? How were you feeling? And that will give you a little bit of a clue as to your first love. At least it does me. I mean, man, when, I, when Jesus saved me, I, I knew where he saved me from. I knew how lost I was. I knew, you know, where I came from. We can't never forget where we came from because then sometimes we can ignore. See, if we don't forget where we came from, then we can help minister to those who've been there and are there. Then we won't be all high and mighty and act like we've, you know, because we've arrived that, that, oh, I can't believe you are living like that. <laughs> and then and the Holy Spirit reminds you, well, do you remember? <laughs> do you remember back then and back when? <sighs> we got we to gotta remember where we came from. And, and you know, here's, here's the thing. Jesus said uh, uh, to the church, he says, I have this one thing against you, that you left your first love. And then Revelations 2.5 says this, remember therefore... I love this. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent. So remember, therefore, where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. So do the things that you, when you first got saved, start doing those again. Do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Now, we all know that repenting is turning away from whatever we're caught up in, the sin, the whatever, and turning to God, right? It's not just asking forgiveness because don't be tricked. Man, we've got to be a people that turn away from that sin and turn back to God so that we can be free of what's behind us. Amen? So John 1, 4 says... In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That's why we're talking about make sure your light is shining bright so others might come and see the love and the light that God has placed upon you, that you should be shining so bright so that when a lady asks you for a cup of coffee, could you please buy me a cup of coffee, that your yes would be in your heart and your spirit, that when it's an inconvenience, you say, I really don't feel like it, but I'm going to do it because Jesus loves her, and I love her, and so I'm in. I got a yes in my spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this is something that we have. When we don't feel like praying for somebody that you know needs prayer and Holy Spirit puts it on your heart, then we need to say, forgive me, Lord, and begin to pray. When, 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 we're, looking for, when we're looking for vision for the year and all of a sudden the Lord gives it to us, but then we, we expect everybody else to act upon that vision? Selah, just think about that. No, we got to be in it to win it. We got to be about our father's business. We got to be people that are going to unite. You know, G- Jesus says, in his, right before he's going to the cross, just hours before he's going to the cross, 
He prays for the church. He prays for his disciples. He prays, right? And he declares, he says, Father, the love that you have given me, I've given to them. Give to them. You know, and he says, the glory that you've given me, I have given to them. Now think about this. He's not only praying for the love that, he, that the Father has for himself. I think it's John 17, 26. It says, Father, that the love that you've given me, I've declared your name and will continue doing so. Father, the love that you've give, given me, give to them as I am in them. But on that same, um, on that same scripture in John 17, he says, he says, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them. How many people think it's pretty cool to have God's glory? Yeah. And let them be one as we are one. Do you know unity was talking about 480 times in the word of God. So that means it's really, 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 really important to God that we walk in unity. That we're his beloved. That we're the body of Christ. And we've all got a part to play. And that's why in growth tracks you learn what your gifts is. You learn where, uh, what, how God wants to use you because we're all different parts of the body. He's the head and we're the body. And we all got to do our part. Amen? And so I want to just encourage you for, um, for that. And that was like not in my notes. I just wanted to share that with you because it's glorious. God loved us so much that he gave. But he's still giving. The question is, are we receiving and are we doing and releasing what we've been given? What he, he's entrusted to us. Amen? Amen? Friends, survival mode doesn't lead, us, lead to revival mode. Survival mode does not lead to revival mode. If you're still holding on, just trying to survive, then let your faith arise and let your enemies be scattered. Come on, friends, we are not called to be sur just survivors. We are called to be people that are, are to unite as one, and we are called to destroy the works of the enemy. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. We are called to be the head and not the tail, the over and not the under. Friends, we've got to start to see ourselves as Christ sees us. So if you've been messing up a lot and you've been, you know, falling short and, and allowing the things to get into your life and into your head, then just turn and repent. Ask God for forgiveness and just, just know and trust that he is faithful. He is faithful to take that, whatever has been holding you back, whatever has been encroaching upon your mind, your will, or your emotion, he's, he's, he's faithful to take that and throw it into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be used against you again by him. But don't, don't be fooled. The enemy will always try to remind you. And then you just tell him, behind me, Satan. I'm covered by the blood. All right. Prayer without action is incomplete. Prayer without action is incomplete. James, let's turn the Bibles to James 2. James 2, 14. Because faith without works is dead. So 14 says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Question mark. Verse 15 says, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute and um, of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed, be filled but you don't give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? You know, I got to tell you something. There are some religious people out there. I'm just so glad you guys aren't the religious ones. I believe in relation. I want us to be people of relationship with Jesus Christ. A religious spirit will always try to dominate, control, and think more highly of themselves than they ought. 
The Pharisees were religious, and they held people under control. Can I tell you something? Jesus came to set us free. All right. I don't know who that's for, but, you know, at least you can tell somebody in love, Jesus loves you. Amen? Ah, uh, so, so, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is Dead. Dead. But, don't you love the buts in the Bible? When God gives us a but, there's some redemption coming with it. You know what I'm saying? So, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by, say by, by. my works. You believe that there is one God You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Whoo! Wake up call. Come on now. But do you want to know, oh foolish man? Now he's not talking to you guys because I know you guys have some works behind your faith, right? Come on now. Putting hands and feet to your faith. But other people out there. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? Whew, perfect. All right, 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. How many people are friends of God in this place? Come on. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? You know who, she, who he's talking about, right? She was like the madam of, of Jericho. And you know what? She hit them and she sent them out another way and because she believed in who their God was. Okay? So, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Wow. That's a powerful word. And you know, I got to just tell you something. I just want a little tidbit. Rahab is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. So she made it. Come on. See, Jesus is our example, and I am reminded that Jesus of... uh, 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 I'm reminded of Jesus all the times that he has stepped in on my behalf, on your behalf. You know, Jesus was always one that would go low. Think about it. I think about when he knows he was about to be crucified, what did he do? He got the towel out and got on his knees and he washed the people's, his disciples' feet. He served them. He was revealing to them. Don't always want to be the person that gets served. You need to go low. Sometimes we need to humble ourselves and say, hey, I just want to help. My wife and I, we truly believe. Our staff, we believe. We're here to serve y'all. Come on. We love you. We're servants of the Most High God. So just know this, that we truly care. I, I, I can't tell you, you know, when, when Walter, my wife, myself, when we're preparing to give you some meat, it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of preparation. It takes a lot of time. But it's glorious because guess what? It's a win-win. We get to learn more as we're sharing more. Amen? But, but we do it because we love you and we care. And, and, and something that we don't take idly. And, and I just want to tell you something. It's, uh, it's beautiful when we're able to go out and we're able to, to share to hundreds of families food that they need to survive. Food that they need to, to see how good God is. See, because we don't get the glory. He does. 
Amen? All right. But we have to learn that heaven's value system uh, uh, is so valuable and important. It's all about presence. Of, uh, you know, we have to be people that want to be in the presence of Holy Spirit. See, it's Holy Spirit. When we, when we enter into to a place where we are allowing ourselves to be not only filled with Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit in us, but then Holy Spirit in me is for me. Holy Spirit upon me is for you. Are you with me? I, I, I just got to tell you, I'm going to share some stories, so I won't go into that, but I, I, got, a, I got a couple of things I want to share with you because that uh, we have to know the truth, and the truth... Um, uh, is really something that the Lord reveals to us and he reveals um, our purpose or destiny, our divine design is, is our reason for being. And, uh, and once we became a um, Christian, be, when we became born again, the old has gone and the new has come, right? I was just talking with a brother um, about that today. And so, but you know what? We have to understand that old has to stay gone. It's gonna try to come back. The enemy is going to try to throw it at you. No, no, no. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Right? The old is gone. I'm not going back there. I'm, I, I'm moving on. Right? But God's desire for us is to achieve or accomplish kingdom purposes. He wants us to be about expanding the kingdom of God. He wants us to be about, uh, but unfortunately today it's easy to get caught up in the wrong purposes, isn't it? The apostle Paul said, I am only what I am because of the grace of God. I am only what I am because of the grace of God. You know, I think in uh, Matthew 22, it says this in 37, it says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. How many people here are glad that someone reached out and told you about Jesus? How many people here was loving the fact that someone represented who he really was and loved you in spite of who you were? <laughs> Can I tell you something? If I didn't see Jesus' love in someone else and I saw that they were living in the world just like I was and they're trying to profess someone that I didn't know, man, get a grip, bro. I'm out of here. You know? I'm, I'm just saying. I, I know how I was back then. And, man, you got to show me. This ain't the show me state, but you got to show me why you believe. I need to see it. Christ in you. I need to see what you're professing. We've got to be a people that are prayed up, that are walking in the goodness of God, that are walking in the spirit of God, the love of God, that we're willing to share the word of God, the good news, the gospel, so that others might be saved. You know, it goes on to say in verse 40, it says, on these two commandments hang the law of the prophets. See, Jesus didn't come to renounce the law. He came to fulfill it, and he did so excellently. I want to give you some tools, and we're going to try to wind this down. On, we were over the hill, so you got about another five or ten minutes? Praise God. Okay. Well, I, I, that lady in the red over there, there, there's a, you know, I love you. God bless you. All right, John 15. Seven, it says this, if you abide, in other words, remain in me, and my words abide, remain in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Don't you just love abiding in God's love? Abide in Jesus' love. But you know what? To, to really be successful at this, we have, to, we have to be able to arise and believe it. We have to arise and shine. I love, I love Isaiah 60. Arise and shine. Let the, uh, let the light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord risen to, uh, um, rises to shine on you. That's a different translation. It's, but here's what it says. It's a new, a new living translation. In verse 2, it says, Darkness and black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over 
you. So when you find yourself in a very dark place, okay, just know that God wants to shine over you. Let your faith arise. Let your belief and trust in him arise more and more, more than ever before. Choose to declare his purpose over your life. Choose to, to have faith declarations and, and, and believe that God will surely deliver you from this. Friends, we have to have faith to believe that, and, but we have to put hands and feet to what we believe. Amen? All the nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Can I tell you something? All the nations is talking, really, I believe. Some say Gentiles. Some translations. I believe those are souls that God uses you to win. Those are the treasures. That is, those are your inheritance, if you will. I'm so thankful that in, in the last two months of, of last year that we were able to lead uh, over 55 people to Jesus. Come on. That is beautiful. Can I tell you something? It's one of those things that, that we, we should all remember where we have come from and what God has done in the journey. It reveals the truth and it, and it really is inviting us to be more personal with our faith, more personal with our walk with the Lord, so that what? So that we can be transformed. And that he is revealing to us in that truth, not only who we are, but he's also revealing our inheritance. Amen? When we say to the Lord, we pay a price, and I'm willing to pay a price for you, Lord, let me tell you something. It's going to cost you. Can I tell you? It's going to cost us to, to walk out our faith. It is. But can I tell you something? The return. The return is glorious.